Should we introduce ourselves again? I'm Dave Branscombe, Global Partner Solutions Architect, focused on security and compliance, identity, and management. Uh, hello, hello. It's not, oh. Hello, everybody. Uh, hi, Megut here, um, security engineer at uh, MDS, uh, primarily working on our SOC services uh, and Microsoft Sentinel. Hello. Uh, nice to meet you, people. Percy Sinosai, Executive Director at Exibnos. I am Zero Trust Specialist and Strategist. Uh, hi, Patrick Hall. Again, um, the practice lead for uh, applied innovation here at MDS. OK, so um, as you know, we're, we're all here uh, really talking about uh, Copilot, right? And, and, and more so uh, about the data and the solutions uh, around Copilot. And, and as you guys can see, we have uh, a pretty esteemed panel for, for the last panel here. Um, and of course, uh, you know, everyone's kind of introduced themselves, but I figure for, for this, particularly after the presentation we just got from John, if we can kind of start talking, um, you know, a little bit about what Copilot is and, and really how we envision Copilot interacting with the data, particularly uh, within the enterprise. And so maybe we can start with you, David. Yeah, so um, with with Copilot, I, I think one of the 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 interesting things to to consider is um, it is not meant to supplant or 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 to 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 be something to to replace uh, things that you've already got. <clears throat> it enhances it. It helps you to work faster. It helps you to get to conclusions faster. So. Uh, just as an example, I mean, we've got M365 Copilot um, internally, and um, I've been working on on creating some presentations around incident response for small medium businesses. And starting from scratch is kind of hard, <laughs> right? And uh, so, so what I did was I, I went to Security Copilot or to M365 Copilot, and I said, "Can you give me the structure?" of what a presentation would look like if I wanted to uh, talk about business email compromise in a small customer environment. And what it'll do then is go out and look in the Microsoft uh, environment in, 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 in our data, find information that's related to that and bring it back to me and present it in whatever way I want. So I did this for um, you know, a number of different things and it, was, it wasn't last Sunday, but the Sunday before uh, is when I was doing this. And within the space of probably three hours, I had the skeleton of seven decks about incident response, which is fantastic as a starting point, right? It didn't give me everything I need, absolutely, you know, end to end, but it gave me a starting point. And for me, that's hours and hours and hours of work putting this together. And it put pictures in there that I'm never going to use and you know stuff like that. It, it, but but it's a starting point. And I think we need to for for now that where Copilot is now, that's where we need to think of it. That it's it's jump starting every activity that, that you're you're working on, whether it's power platform, whether it's security, whether it's you know working in Windows or Microsoft 365, it's a jump start. It's something to, to help you make a, a, a leap forward, save you some time and get past the boring stuff, the hard stuff, and then become creative because I don't mind creating decks. That's not a problem. But I don't like having to figure out what do I want to put in the deck, <laughs> right? That that's that's kind of the, the hard part. So getting me past all that, and uh, and and then I can start being creative and 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 telling a story around what we're what we're uh, presenting um, is pretty interesting. And you can do the same thing with with Word and and with Outlook. Even you know you can uh, tell tell Copilot to give me the framework for a response to this email. Give me a uh, an idea for 
what's what's going to be talked about in this meeting, right? So uh, it 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 really is a, a very unique change in the way that we work. Um, it's not it's not replacing what I'm doing. It's just taking away the drudgery uh, of of normal uh, you know office work. So that's kind of my perspective on it. Um, I'll let somebody else chat. GPT. Uh, sure. Um, yeah. So uh, I can talk a little bit about um, you know from from my perspective as a as a SOC analyst and, and working in the SOC, right? So when an incident surges, right, each incident is going to have different characteristics. So say the the user, the IP, the device, and there's not just you know the different characteristics. Is how many different tools am I looking at to get to the root of this incident? Right? What is the context? And I can spend plenty of time running queries, looking at the firewall logs, looking at the audit logs and Entra ID, formerly Azure AD, um, looking at audit logs and Office 365. What is this user clicked on? What emails has he sent out? I can go on, right? So I think that the advantage when it comes to Copilot is how can I get to the root of the issue in a much quicker fashion so that I can focus my time on a proactive response, right? And making sure that uh, you know I can put the organization in 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 a in a better posture than it was prior, based on me having all the context possible. And not just that, right? How does this incident relate to other incidents, right? What has this user been involved with before? These are all things I can do right now, but it'll take plenty of work, which is okay. Uh, but with Copilot, uh, I think it's going to be a, a a big game changer. Yeah, think and, and and actually, you know, sitting here and and Pedro, knowing your expertise, I I figure one of the things that we can kind of talk about here uh, when we're kind of thinking of Copilot, right? The the next evolution, personal AI assistant. Um, when you think of the modern SOC services today, what are some of the the use cases you can envision that having AI can kind of help uh, some of those SOC service teams today? Well, uh, in my opinion, there are two things that uh, modern SOC services can take advantage of Copilot. The first one being improving your capability to respond against threats. And the second would be to have a bigger picture of the organization you are protecting. And talking about the first one uh, is improving your, your time to response. Your mean time to response, you can uh, improve by using the power of AI. And the second one would be uh, taking advantage of the zero trust model. You can collect information, in particular security alerts for the six zero trust pillars, such as identity, endpoints, and infrastructure applications, data. And by correlating this, uh, this uh, security alerts in a solution such as Microsoft Sentinel, and using security copilot, you can defend or protect your organization more effectively. That is, I think, the things are going to change using. Uh, Security Copilot in SOC services. Interesting. David, can I give you that question as well? Yeah. So, one of the things that, that I think is easy to overlook with um, some of these copilots is that they're designed for people, right? They're, they're, they're not primarily technology for technology's sake, they're designed to help people. And if you think about a SOC team, it can be very discouraging to get beat over and over and over again by adversaries right and that's what happens when humans are trying to defeat advanced adversaries that might be using some kind of automation or even artificial intelligence against them what security copilot can do which is what you were referring to is kind of even the score or, or, or even the playing field so that you can respond quickly because you've got a view of the playing field within seconds, right? Instead of saying, what log do I need to look at? What log, uh, you know, what's the date on this log? What's the time on this log? How does this correlate to my Office 365 log? How does this correlate to this log? You ask Security Copilot and it'll do the work for you. It's working at machine speed, so who cares, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it's doing that job. So we're trying to help people and 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 being able to um, give the defenders in, in in an environment the ability to accomplish their job 
and win once in a while um, is is really important. It's a great response. And, and David, I actually want to come back to you with with this question because you know as you were, were talking about it, one of the things that um, we we hear quite a bit, right? Uh, you know, and co-pilot as as we all know it's very very sexy topic everyone wants to talk about it um the top the topic that's not very sexy is data hygiene content hygiene and when we talk about co-pilot and how that's required um a lot of folks you know they hear it they don't really comprehend it so, so david i'm wondering if you can kind of talk to folks who are excited about co-pilot really kind of that first that important step of of, of you know, data content hygiene, what that looks like in, in a Microsoft environment. Sure. So, so the basic idea behind the way these language models work is that you feed them a whole bunch of diverse data. It turns over that data and it understands what data looks like, whether it's a video, a picture, music file, document, whatever. It just understands what this data looks like. And it doesn't matter what kind of data. You don't have to feed it a specific kind of data. So you have this large language model that, that that serves as kind of the foundation for how data is structured. So that, that that's the first piece. Then these specialized co-pilots enhance that that model by targeting specific technology areas. So talking about data and and, and data hygiene. If you have data in your environment, as as everybody does, in SharePoint or Teams or you know, uh, OneDrive or wherever it is, it's going to go out over that and pour over that data and, and, and make some um, uh, determinations about what type of data that is, who it belongs to, how it's been used by other people, um, who needs access to it and things like that. <clears throat> so coming back to, to, to the point about data hygiene, if if these co-pilots are looking at data and need the data to be um, understandable for it, then it's incumbent upon the, 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 the customer who owns that data to make that data as discoverable as possible and, and as classifiable as possible. So you may have a whole bunch of documents in SharePoint are they classified correctly? Do you have you know, confidential data and, and private data and, and you know, general data? Do you have that stuff classified? Is it organized in a way that Copilot can go out and make some sense of it? Or is it just a big data dump? <laughs> right? um, so we want to make uh, the, 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 the data as accessible uh, to Copilot as possible so that it can make the best determinations about it. And, and as it begins to learn, um, it's going to become smarter. And that's one of the things that, that I think is really cool. Like when, when I was building those decks I was telling you about, I could see in, in, in the information that it was pulling back content from other, other sources. I, I, I could tell where it was getting the information, um, but it presents it in a different way and, and, and just uh, you know, puts some nuance on it and, and, and changes the way it's uh, uh, presented. So um, I think making sure that you have your data in a nice uh, organized, uh, fashion is, is important, and uh, since most people don't have that, <laughs> having a partner like MDS who can come in and help you make some sense of, of your data and, and structure it in a way that uh, Copilot can use um, is, is probably a good uh, good starting point. Thank you, David, and thank you for for the plug, MDS. Um, hi, Ray. I, I, I wanted to, so as we we're kind of talking, I, I really started thinking more about uh, Microsoft Security Copilot. And I think one of the, the really exciting advances we've seen is kind of the security reporting and the automated uh, kind of threat uh, reporting there. And I know David had kind of talked a little bit about the drudgery of some of the tasks that Copilot help with. From a SOC analyst standpoint, uh, how do you, and you can share with the audience, how do you envision um, kind of having that automated kind of security reporting? How, how are some of the ways it can help the modern SOC analysts? Yeah, of course, so, 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 th so there's, there's many ways. Right. So, um, you know, when, when, for example, you're investigating an incident or, or you're, you're looking to make any changes from a security perspective, I mean, Copilot can, I mean, when we talk about human language, that's huge because you can ask it, for example, are these users uh, that are popping up in this incident, what conditional access policies are they under? Right. Uh, do they currently have uh, modern MFA uh, enabled? Right. Do they have any 
uh, suspicious, sign-ins related, right? So those are all things uh, you can spend time querying, but Copilot can do the work for you so that you can get to the bottom of it m much quicker. So, I mean, it, it's very exciting as a security engineer and even as a SOC analyst um, to have Copilot. I think, as David mentioned, it'll give us uh, a huge edge, um, you know, comes to the, the, the adversaries. Um, so, and, and yeah, when, when you talk about, about reporting, um, you know, whether you want to uh, analyze, for example, all right, how many emails do we have being transacted with, uh, you know, financial information uh, with, external, with external entities, right? So those are all things which are uh, important but can fall through the cracks, right? Or may need, uh, you know, thorough investigations to get uh, that data. Uh, with something like, like Copilot, you can get to conclusions much quicker and you can say, hey, maybe we need to make a DLP policy, a data loss prevention policy that will restrict certain communications via email where there's financial or sensitive information involved, right? So getting to those conclusions will become, you know, much quicker and that in turn will allow, you know, the, the, the security engineers and the, the, the analysts to create those additional policies to, prog to progress uh, the organization's uh, security program and, and, and really mature. So it's a great response, Jaime. Uh, Peter, can I ask you the same question? Well, in general, just inviting the people to take advantage of E5's uh, solutions. Uh, Copilot is included, so you can take advantage of that. And also to invite you to take advantage of the zero trust model, where you can have a, a bigger understanding of your current position. Uh, you can ask for your MDS account executive. They have a zero trust assessment for you to understand your current position and um, take advantage of the Microsoft security portfolio. Awesome. So with that said, I wanted to kind of see if we can ask the audience if there are any questions out there just based on Copilot, uh, the approach with security uh, that the panel can answer. Michael? Uh, yeah, sure, uh, I can take it. So I think that there's a benefit for both uh, the customer and the and the third party, right? That's providing the SOC services. Um, it, it provides an edge in being more informed on what's going on uh, when it comes to recommendations for you know how to deal with an incident and also how to you know um, mature and progress the security posture of the organization. And also when you talk about you know organizations that have small teams or perhaps don't have so many hands, uh, that's when automation comes in, right? So I think, you know, there's definitely scenarios that can be configured uh, for automation to take place uh, via co-pilot, uh, but then also uh, the, as I mentioned, the, the third-party SOC will also have a huge edge when it comes to uh, providing those services. As a question, do, do, do you use the, uh, the managed services strictly for security or all operational? So, 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 do they have an operational team that you know takes care of the servers day to day, or uh, does the SOC manage all that? Yeah. Where the line is to to buy it, not. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that 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 is a good question. And 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 what I generally tell customers and partners is, don't think of every copilot as being on every person's machine. That doesn't make any sense at all. 
right? It doesn't make sense to give the person in accounting security co-pilot. They have no use for it, so you're wasting a license, right? Does it make any sense to give someone who doesn't use Power Platform a license for Power Platform co-pilot? So, so I I see, and and you may <laughs> view things a little differently, but um, not not everybody's going to have the same licensing. So. Whereas everybody gets email, everybody gets SharePoint, everybody gets Teams, that, that sort of thing. Um, the co-pilots are going to be targeted at an individual in the organization based on what they do because they have a need for it. Now, as far as does does this customer need security co-pilot versus uh, just relying on their their SOC to, to manage things? Um, what I the, the reason I was asking about the operational tasks is a security co-pilot can do more than simply investigate a, an attack, right? So, so you can ask it, <clears throat> what's my security posture? What are some things I can improve? How can I improve my conditional access policies? How can I improve uh, the security of my Windows workstations? How can I improve the security of my mobile devices? So those are kind of operational tasks that the security co-pilot can help you answer that wouldn't necessarily go to the SOC, right? So each organization is gonna have different levels of maturity and um, you'll kind of have to gauge what that level of maturity is and, and, and how valuable um, that, that type of security information would be to, to a given organization. Does that help? OK. Any more time for some questions? Um, yes, good. Any other questions? Or Seems like everybody's thinking about happy hour at this point. Probably. OK. All right, well, thank, thank you, Pam. You all. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Take care.